Hello, I'm Rocket with Reckless Blenders, and this is Musing from Rocket Cellar. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Reckless Red. And I have uh, the story, the origin story of the Reckless Red and where it came from, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the label as well. And it's a really interesting story. One of the things I wanted to show you is a few years ago, I think it's 2017 uh, vintage, so this would be bottling in 2019, we have these capsules and the capsules have this pull tab. And so you can do like this and up off comes the top. Fantastic, it's like uh, wheels on luggage, right? There was wheels on luggage for a long time but all of a sudden they had four wheels that go any direction and it was a game changer. That feels like the same thing to me. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. The, the origin story of the Reckless Red. So picture this, 9 a.m. on a Saturday. The Reckless Blenders show up. We've been uh, notified. Um, a message went out saying that a blend had been arrived upon. And the weekend before, JT and Dave had gotten together. Um, I think Jimbo and I were out, uh, weren't available for this. And so they got together and they were blending up kind of the last blend of the season. This was in 2019, so we're, this is a 2017 vintage. And we all got together on 9 a.m. Saturday and somebody said, all right, let's, let's test the blend. We, we tend to do that because we want to make sure that our palates weren't impaired or happy um, and that the, the blend that we came up with um, would, would continue, would survive. So we all tasted it and we realized that it all kind of looked at each other after our three sips, three sip rule, right? We all kind of looked at each other and went, meh, this, um, this isn't going to do it. And we're not going to bottle meh wine. We're going to only bottle wine that we go, F yeah, that's good wine. Like, for example, our Merlot, right? Our Merlot, we will not put Merlot on the label unless we feel like it is an F yeah Merlot. So that's, a, that's definitely a thing for us. We want to make sure that we're bottling the best. So at that point, we said, well, what do we do? We had, we had a couple of options. One, we could hit the abort button and come back and try again. But we all felt like, hey, we set aside the day to do the bottling. Let's see if we can blend something together. So we had a handful of uh, grapes available, some varieties available. We ended up spending two and a half, almost three hours blending that day and it was quite the experience we were down to one percent of this five percent of that two percent of this I'll, I'll read you the the varietals in in a minute and just to give you an idea because it, it was very complex and we would we went down an alley you know uh, you know we went down this path and we said okay uh, that's not doing it for us let's back up um, let's start with what, the original blend and then let's go this direction. And we did that several times and uh, it, it, was quite, it was quite good. Um, it was a lot of fun. So we end up two and a half, almost three hours later, we, we finally get to the place where we're like, yeah, this is it. F yeah, we're going to do this. And we then be, proceed to bottle. Some, more, some point along the bottling, somebody says... We should make this a Reckless Red. And I know it's been JT and Jimbo's um, dream to make a Reckless Red for a long time. Initially, I, I fought it. I was like, well, we have these two other blends. I mean, we have the breakfast blend and we have the day glow blend, which why, why wouldn't we wanna make one of those? Well, they continued to pitch the idea and convince me that it was the right thing to do. So, all right, I'm all in now. So after we bottled it, I then needed to proceed and make a label for it. Normally, you know, uh, we would reverse this, right? We'd actually have labels created before we bottle so that we can apply the labels at bottling and we don't have to you know, touch the bottles twice because you got to unpack them and do in anyway. But in this case, because it was a new, it, it was kind of a last minute thing, uh, we decided that all right, we need a, and I, I decided we needed a new label. So the, the, over the next three months, it took me three months to come up with a label. It took me 
three hours to create it once I came up with it. I had a whole bunch of different ideas. For example, I mean, so, so our, our blends. So in one, uh, we have three named blends. One is the breakfast blend. And that tends to be on the lighter and more kind of easy drinking side of the house. I mean, it's, it, it's not just for breakfast anymore. And um, it's got your essential varietals in it. Then we have, on the other end of the spectrum, we have the Dayglow. And Dayglow is a play on the Super Tuscan. So it you know, tends to be Sangiovese based with some kind of uh, grape, either Merlot or something like that. Generally, we decided, well, we don't want to be limited by, uh, we have to have a Merlot or a Cab in a Super Tuscan, which is kind of the tradition. So we decided to rename our Dayglow an Ultra Tuscan. So, <laughs> and, uh, and on that side of the house, it, it tends to be higher in structure. So the, the content tends to be a bit more structured, tends to have just a, a handful of varietals. We don't have any hard and fast rules. So now in the middle between these two and these two spectrums, we have the Reckless Red. I came up with, I don't know, five, six, seven different label ideas over the course of those three months. Like for example, on the, if you look at, no, this is the Merlot, sorry. Um, if you look at the Dayglow, right, we have the, the band theme right? And this is the trumpeter of the band. I have the drummer and the piano player and the sax player. So I thought, well, hey, let's, you know, let's round out a theme on for this and, and use one of those. And it didn't, it just didn't sing. It was, mm, it was okay. Again, I'm not going to go with meh in terms of a label. So the other ideas that we had, there was, there were different images that I had, um, come up with over the course of the last 15 years. So I cycled through a handful of those, seeing what fit and what didn't fit. And I remember pretty clearly, I was um, hanging out with Miss Rocket. We were watching TV. It was an afternoon. I think it was probably a Saturday or a Sunday. And I'm just scrolling through the artwork um, that I tend to look for inspiration. And this image came up. And I immediately went, that's it. I know exactly what I want to do with it. And what I tend to do is find art that I can license and license it. And then I'll, because I have the rights to do this, I can, I shift it so that it fits um, our needs like coloring, um, layers, sizing, all those kind of fun, good fun business. So I tend, that's how I tend to go about the label creation process. So I saw this and immediately went, yeah, that's how we felt after two and a half hours of blending that day, our brains were like going everywhere and our palates as well. So it, we were just uh, riding high that day. It was a, it was a really good, good time. And so that's where the label came from. We're gonna have more of these posters printed up at one of our future events. So if you're a wine club member, um, make sure you ask for one of these posters and uh, I'll, I'll get you one. So what's in the Reckless Red? So the 2017 Reckless Red, so this was bottled last year in 2019. It has Barbera and Sangiovese, 41 and 20% of those. So it's a good chunk of those two grapes. Then we have Torriga Nacional, Merlot, Syrah, Tempranillo, Tinto Cal, Suzao, and Tinta Amarilla and various percentages of those, everything from 7% to 4, 3, 2%. Uh, every, like I've said in previous videos, we argue about one or 2% at times, and it's amazing how that changes things. And this was an example of that. Um, I love Jim Brown's back label on this. He, he's our wordsmith and he does a fantastic job of this. And so I'll read it to you because it's, it's worth it. When he is not drinking his favorite beer, the sexiest man alive drinks reckless red. Of course he does. We'd like to think so anyway. Catching arrows in flight, parting the Red Sea, splitting atoms with his teeth, jumping to the right conclusion every time. Yes to all. Leonardo da Vinci, very reckless. Alexander Hamilton, 
writing recklessly. So reckless is as reckless drinks. This reckless red is an Italian blend, Barbera and Sangiovese secretly seasoned with a smattering of French and grapes hailing from the Iberian Peninsula West. Uncork adventure and remember the W is silent. Anyway, always a good time with Jim Brown's back labels. When I talk about our Sagrantino, which I'll be doing soon, there's another good one there. So anyway, that's the 2017. 2018, which we just bottled a few months ago, has, uh, is, a, is a big chunk of Merlot. It's about 45%. It's got 15% Barbera, Sangiovese, 15%. Then there's 10% Sagrantino and 10% Tariga. And so this one is also just as yummy and tasty as the 2017. They're very different wines. They have different characteristics, but they're both just beautiful and fantastic. So anyway, just wanted you to know the history of Reckless Red. And this is Hobbs, the winery cat. And you have, every so often on the Facebook page, you'll see Hobbs pop up. <laughs> and uh, now you get to see him in a video. I'm Rocket. Thank you. And this is Musings from Rocket's Cellar. <laughs>